Hey folks, Mel the Train Shooter back with something a little bit different. I do a live show every Sunday night where I answer questions from the Terrainiac community. And I've often thought that there's a lot of information in there that just simply gets lost for if you don't watch the show. So what I've decided to do is actually record the show, go through it, pick out all the best bits and clean out all the general chat and that sort of stuff as best I can. So I can present sort of a weekly terrain tips video with the condensed information for those who don't catch the show or don't want to sit through a two hour long show just to get a few tips. Now, this is the first time I've done this. So first time editing this, first time working out, I'd really appreciate what you think of it. Yeah, but in this show, what we're going to be covering is, and I've got a list because there's so much, we're going to be covering ways of flock uh, sealing snow, uh, loads of ideas for medieval uh, terrain, uh, storage problems, uh, priming problematic materials, texture coats, uh, stiffen up cardboard so it doesn't warp. Uh, one second, we're, there's a lot, isn't there? Yeah, uh, working with texture paste and finally my thoughts on 3D printers. Yes, it's a little bit rambling. To be perfectly honest, guys, I'm editing this at 2 a.m. on a Monday morning after the live show because I want to get this done. So uh, here it comes and I'll catch you at the end. Enjoy, folks. Yeah, uh, Christopho is how do you seal snow static? Yeah, on uh, so static grass snow, I'm assuming. On a table, I think I added a bit too much in one go, and the the varnish spray won't hold it properly. Right, uh, this can be an issue. Yeah, snow's a particular pain in the butt for this because snow is very layered quite thickly, more than normal flocks and static grasses. And obviously, yeah, you put glue at the bottom, and what you put down on it will stick to that glue, but the glue won't really soak up. Yeah, and if you've got uh, lots of flock on top. Yeah, and you do a spray on top that will seal the top, yeah, but it won't seal down to the bottom. And so you've got loose flock in the middle. And that's the challenge. Now, there's a couple of ways of handling this. One, you seal it with a watered down PVA, yeah. You put something, a flow in, in there, like a flow improver or isopropic al alcohol IPA. And then you let that soak all the way through, yeah, and then let that freeze it and sort of set it all the way through. The other thing that you can do is if you want to use spray such as hairspray or a varnish to seal it, do it in layers, yeah. Put it in a little sieve, do a little sprinkling, give it a little blast, sprinkle some more down onto the wet varnish, give it a spray, and that will that will create a laminated effect With where... So that's how I would handle, what you call it, doing uh, layered snow, yeah? Just sprinkle it with a sieve, yeah? Give it a bit of a spray, give it another sieve, spray. I'd use hairspray to actually fix it going up. And then at the end, once you've got it done, when it comes to sealing, yeah, you can use a, a matte spray, okay? Uh, but I quite like satin varnish for doing snow. Be yeah, well, it gives you a sort of a crystally effect. Yeah, so you know how snow's got a bit of a glint to it? Yeah. Yeah, it gives it that sort of look. Okay, so I would go that way when it comes to sealing your snow, matey. Yeah? So, uh, I hope that helps you, uh, Christoph. Don't know if you're in the chat. If you if, I hope that helps you. If you're catching it later. Yeah, get spraying. Jig Jack 18, I'm planning a new terrain set in 28 mil for medieval skirmish games. I've got hills and woods, what, sh what things should I add next? Right, we're gonna throw this open to a chat. This is one of those group sourcing things. Now I'm pretty sure we've done this in the past. Wait. Yeah, but in the meantime, you guys. Wait, yeah, what would you add to a, tw uh, to what tw a medieval terrain set? 28 mils, that's a bit smaller than they're centered. They are 28 mil. Are they 28 mil? Yeah, I think they're 28 mil. Now I'm damn sure that we've talked about this. Uh, Ed saying ruins. What kind of medieval skirmish kind of thing? Like, like Fantasy, oh, that's broken spirit. Da, 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 da. What kind of medieval era are we talking? Talk drain. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Animals. Oh, that's all the Burma ideas. I don't know. 
I can't find my list. I'm trying to think. Wonder if it's in the other book. Right. Uh, encampment accessories. Uh, Gary's saying swamp. Crawley's saying thatched huts. You do thatched huts. Also medieval, you'd be able to get little, away with turf little, huts. Little wood windmills. Wood windmill? Yeah. Because yeah. uh, obviously. Yeah. And if you've got a windmill, then obviously you're going to need wheat to process. So you can go along and you can do the wheat fields. So you're looking at cutting up the carpet mat. If, if you've got like any rivers in there, you can go your little water. Thing. Water mill as well? Yeah, you can get your water mills. Bring out the Holy of Hand Grenade, yeah? Oh, yeah. The, the wayside shrine for the Holy of Hand Grenade of Antonon. Trojan Rabbit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, your mother was at Hampstead, your father smelt of elderberries. Trojan Rabbit? I don't think I said it. Do you get the reference? Not really, no. Monty really. Python and the Holy Grail. Is, uh, that, is that that one where on the castle thingy on the castle? Yeah, yeah, Your mother was a hamster. Yeah, yeah. father's yeah. mouth, other berries. Yeah, Callisto <laughs> uh, saying fences, haystacks, carts, general farm stuff. Yeah, farmstead. Yeah, dig saying watch uh, Stonehenge type of deal. Uh, you wouldn't have to do a Stonehenge. Uh, you could do a wooden henge and just use twigs in a circle yeah. arrangement Stone because ruins. yeah. But they did have lots of wooden henges as well. Mart saying peasants. Uh, Uncle Heavy, uh, plague pit. That's a good idea. That's a good one. Yeah. You uh, saying a midden and a gong farmer with his barrow. It's a gong farmer. A gong farmer. He's a farmer who farms, farms gong turds. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for a medi table, I've always wanted to make some uh, pollarded and coppice trees. That's true. If you don't know what pollarded and coppice trees are, uh, in England, during the medieval times and across Europe, because everything like wicker fences and stuff needed long, straight things, what they did is they chopped a tree down so it would have new shoots coming out of it. Yeah, And as the new shoots growed up, they would grow up nice and straight. And then they'd chop those down. And you get new shoots coming up. And they basically harvest a tree. Yeah. And they do this to an entire sections of forest. Yeah. And it's it's led. It, the, the practice is called uh, coppicing. And it leaves what's called a pollard tree. Yeah. Which is basically a tree with a large stump. And then lots of branches that come off that. Rather than it growing up normally. So that would be good. Yeah. Miniature crow in a creepy tree. Yeah, obviously. Uh, then you'd have the, not the crow's nests. What do they call those cages they hung people in? Yeah, archery targets. Holy grail. Uh, creepy trees. Wooden carts. You guys are liking the whole Halloween thing at the moment with all the creepy stuff and the crow's yeah. stuff, aren't you? Uh, wizard's towers. Rivers always look nice. Uh, cattle to rustle over a must. Yeah. Uh, farm enclosures. Animal enclosures. Uh, da -da -da -da. Ruins and farm fields can be used for a lot of genres. That's true as well. I mean, keeping your medieval, to, you know, keeping it, not theming it too heavy. So it could drop into fantasy, it could drop into See, medieval, theme early theme times. Changes. Yeah, that works really well. So bear that in mind. Wow, they're really coming through. We've got a busy one today. Yeah, it? yeah, we've got loads of ideas here. Wow. Right, here we go. Because, I mean, my, my chat is going faster than I could read. Wooden hinges would have been long gone by the medieval era. Yeah, but at the same time, we do have fantasy. So, you know, it's not... There's still a place for wooden hinges. It's always a Tilting and jousting feel. Okay. A corn or a barrow. Yeah. Barrow. If we're going down that path, how about a cow shooting catapult? <laughs> Inns. <laughs> yeah. Uh, giblets. Thank you, Martin. That's what we call those cages. Uh, what offences? Church and graveyards. Pits. Yeah. Uh, marketplace. Uh, go. Combat diggy saying, what do you call it? Willows, which is another good one. Festival grounds, actually, as well. Grawley saying, hinges are more stone, bronze, iron age before medieval, but still would have been around in ruins by that time. That's true. 
Yeah, on top of that, yeah, you've got maypoles as well. Because they were a Celtic thing that lasted. I mean, we still have May Day now, so we still put up May Day, maypoles in, in certain lovely quaint bits of England. You don't do it in Stoke. I mean, it confused, but can you imagine Morris dancers in Stoke? They would have no idea. Yeah. Uh, Callisto saying there's some decent wick offences in Thingiverse for the 3D printers out there. And if you're not, I've got a Francis tutorial coming out on Tuesday, along with a washing line, hanging nets, and a well tutorial. Yeah. Iron Maiden. Run to the hills. Ed saying, uh, Renegra, Ren Render, uh, make plastic wick offences. A tannery, which is where they process leather. Signpost. Jesus wept, burning stack. Uh... A witch's burning stack, charcoal burning mounds, stock and pillories. Actually, yeah, charcoal burning. Yeah, That's yeah, it. a coaching in, yoldy in, a leprosy hospital, hangman's galleys, zombies, a ducking stool to go with the pond for the witches. One minute, Dad. Uh, what's that game you have on here? This med that medieval one. Oh, you are you talking? Uh, oh, what is it? You could just click minimum. Kingdom. King, uh, King King Deliverance. Kingdom Deliverance. Honestly, have a look at some screenshots for that game, yeah? That'll give you ideas. Yeah, yeah, go on, on and go on Google. That's you know, a bloody good idea. You know, that's, that's, what I, that's what I think of all medieval stuff. That's why I was thinking all that. Yeah, uh, I mean, that was the reason I bought the game. Which because it's really good inspiration for, for medieval buildings. Like, if you have a look at it all, some of the forests and stuff in there are really, really nice. Yeah, so watch, like, jump on, yeah. have a look for Kingdom Come Deliverance. Yeah, and jump on Google, go on images... Have a look at some of their buildings and the like features. Your, could you got like all your forest bandit camps and stuff and all that? All your yeah. makeshift ones. Uh, nice. Field would be a cool addition. I remember absolutely gorgeous Bretonian diorama. Yeah, we all know that one. Or us Aldens. Yeah, uh, striped tents for, tents for the knights. Fullery, a castle, obviously. Of course. You are in. Awesome. <laughs> Outdoor kitchen pub, dye works, shrubbery. You've got to have a shrubbery. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Quickly, guys, I've done the green now. What colour do you go after green? On his skin? Yeah. I, I think you, know you need I mean, to like, find a blue. Or do you want to do your metallics next? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. I'm trying to think what these guys... I'm going to go off what these guys are thinking. That's what what do, do don't change my question right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right, so we're going to wrap this up. Yeah, because we have. Get, there's no way he's going to build all of that. A shrubbery, a blacksmith shop. That's a good one. Put medieval stuff in there. Good idea. Uh, Rowan ruins. That's true. Uh, round table and bring us a shrubbery and we're going to end that one a shrubbery so if you're looking for medieval oh, build good. ideas I think the past five minutes of me reading your comments out is enough for anyone to get a few tables from yeah a lava pit Diggy you're just being si silly what do you mean a lava, a lava pit would be perfect in medieval Europe yeah Lava. Yeah, as well as the dragon, like you said there. You need that as well. Uh, Jam Jarasaurnut. Jam Jarasaurnut. Yeah. Uh, what are some good solutions you found for terrain storage? Or what are some of the ways uh, you design pieces of terrain to be storable? This is an interesting question because I've had this a few times, yeah, recently. Now, uh, I talked about it in the book, okay, Terrain Essentials, yeah, so any of you guys with the book, there's a storage element in there, yeah, on top of that, I have done a video on this, and it's in the Talk Terrain playlist, yeah, you can find that on the channel homepage, go to the channel homepage for the Terrain Tutor, scroll down, because all my playlists are listed, yeah, I put all my videos in, in specific playlists, and all my playlists are listed on the channel homepage. So you can jump on there, go down to the one which says Talk Terrain and War Game Show, and there's a Talk Terrain video on actual storage. Now, my quick answer when it comes to storage is if storage is an issue for you, build your terrain specifically for storage. And what I mean by that is quite simply, yeah, if you've got a large plastic box, then work out what the space is on the inside, yeah? Cut a bit of cardboard out, yeah, that fits in on it. Take that out 
and then use that as the templates for all your scatter bases for your terrain. So all your corner pieces, your table edges, and all your circles or squares, put them all from there. And then that way you know that if they all come from that one piece of cardboard, then they'll all be able to sit directly into the box in exactly the right positions without stacking on top of each other because their bases will be the same as the cardboard. And what you can do is once you've cut them out, use the template and just put some marks in of where things go. Now, the other thing is depending on the size of your storage box, if your storage box is reasonable enough for you to think that you can get two layers of storage in there, let's say it's, let's say it's 20 inches. What you can do is you can make some battens out of folded corrugated cardboard, you know, fold them in triangles. Yeah, make those 10 inches, hot glue those round the edges of your piece. Then put a bit of MDF or cardboard that's been reinforced. Drop that on to give it a second layer. Then as long as when you make your terrain pieces, you watch it, you always make sure that they're no amount more than nine inches high. You can guarantee that those terrain pieces won't just fit in because it's been worked off that cardboard template, but they'll also be able to cleanly stack one on top of the other. So what I'm basically saying is before you decide what you want in your set, decide how many pieces you can have, how much height you've got. Now, I mean, you might decide that you're gonna go 12 inches and eight inches, so you can have some really nice feature pieces on the bottom layer, smaller scatter on the top. You might multi-layer it and do three layers and like have hedges which are only gonna take up perhaps an inch. Yeah, and then you could just do a layer before the lid goes on and just have an absolute mass of hedges or roads or low-lying terrain which doesn't take up a lot of height. And so those are the best ways to sort of cope when storage is an issue because what it means is you have one entire terrain set, yeah, in one box. And it's been designed that way from the start, which means you're not stacking things awkwardly. You're not trying to figure out how to get things in. You're not having to leave things on top of the box. Yeah, because it won't all go in and things are getting knackered by cats and stuff like that. You're not going to have to spread terrain over multiple boxes and go searching for them. It'll all be in one box and you can just go grab it, take it on your way. So that's my solution. Yeah, for dealing with when storage is an issue. If storage is an issue, make storage the issue from the start. Yeah, and factor it in. Uh, Block A23 is asking, how do you deal with covering, covering cork and mixtures that are hydrophobic and shed your paint? Is there a way to cover it and keep it covered outside 50 layers of paint? Yes, there's a couple of ways. Yeah, hydrophobic, uh, I mean, cork isn't hydrophobic. It doesn't repel water. It's just got a very sh shiny surface and water runs off it, okay? Hydrophobic is an actual uh, chemical that repels water and pushes water away from it. What we're actually doing is we're talking about substances that, you know, water doesn't bond with or blend with or anything like that, or doesn't sit and just runs off and trouble's sticking to. Yeah, so there's a couple of ways that you can do this, yeah. One, give it a quick spray of something. Now, you, what you can do is you can give it a quick spray of hairspray, of matte varnish, yeah, of spray primer. All of those will give it a nice easy coating and they'll allow you to, what you call it, it'll allow you to then paint on top. If you can't spray it, then the other option you can go for is go in and give it a coating of filler. Filler will bond to corking and stuff like that. It sticks to anything, plastic, no matter what. But the the, the surface of filler, yeah, and I'm literally talking really watered down filler. Just give it a brush over. The surface of a filler, once it's actually over, gives a great bond for paint. Yeah, it's really good. It primes it really well. Yeah, so if, you, if you're having trouble getting paint on plastic, yeah, you can either give it a spray with hairspray, varnish, primer, or you can go on and go and give it a, a filler wash and then that will work as well. And then you can just lay it down, a base coat on top of that. Yeah, and we'll go from there. Right, people are saying, Mel, you should inform the police first. Right, so block A, that is how I would do it. JP's also saying use paintable cork. 
Obviously, that's a, a sensible answer, yeah. But if you haven't, if you haven't used paintable cork or so, something like that, the other answers work. Okay, Mitch W. Uh, what mixture do you like as stucco for building walls? I find glue filler tends to nick with wargaming use, and it's not a texture I particularly love. To be perfectly honest, I like uh, rolling. What do you call it? If it, they're made out of foam. Yeah, simple uh, texture from rolled up uh, uh, foil and then just a thin filler wash. And that's my go-to for sort of good, putting a, a good coating over it. Yeah. Uh, guys, what are your suggestions for texturing up foam and foam board and that sort of stuff? Yeah, what are your go-tos for your textured paints? Let's see what the comments come back with. Uh, PVA mixed with fill and some sand in to add a bit of uh, texture works fine. Paint and PVA mix. Some modellers use mods products to seal stuff before painting, yeah. Vallejo earth textures or Liquitex pastes. Liquitex pastes are good. Yeah, or mixed grit in with paste. Basic, uh, what's your texture paint, obviously. Uh, Calistra saying a broken brick has a nice grainy texture for pressing into foam. That's true. Jez is saying baking soda too. Baking soda is really fine. It works really well. Uh, are you insane? I like a mix of uh, a filler and PVA stippled on as a stucco effect. It makes for a fairly exaggerated look, which is fine for fantasy and sci-fi. Yeah, and it dry brushes up well as well. Varnish then dust uh, with tile grout for a fine texture. Yeah. Mod Podge and Fine Sand, Pigment and Pigment Fixer, then Matte Varnish Spray, yeah. Okay. Uh, Jez is saying I've got a few small chunks of concrete I use for texture on foam and leather. Yeah, that makes sense. Acrylic cork mixed with sand and water, nice. You can get household baking soda that isn't as fine as baking soda sold for baking, nice. Baking soda. Super glue. Just make sure you're in a well vented area. That's a bit expensive, I would have thought. What? Ioris is right. I need to reinforce a piece of thin card akin to seal or box card. How can I do this without warping? It's about five inches by six inches. First off, you can do both sides. Okay? So if it's a little bit of card, you can. Put PVA on one side and then bend it straight fat, put PVA on the other side, it'll fix. Another good way of doing it, yeah, is applying, what's the glue? Uhu. Uhu contact. Uhu. U-H-U contact glue. Yeah, because that actually, that doesn't shrink. Yeah, so it doesn't warp. So you can, but you can smear a layer of that straight over cardboard and it'll dry hard as rock. Okay, and you've got no warping issues like that. Yeah. Uh, after that, filler's okay. I'd probably recommend an Artex, a Stuco over a filler. Yeah. We'll go, dig it. Yeah, U H U, U Hoo. So, yeah, that's how I do. Five, watch it, five inches by six inches. Go for Yoohoo glue probably and just give it a layer of that and let it dry. And once that's dried, yeah, you'll just be able to watch call it. You'll just be able to build on it like it was a piece of plastic. Uh, another thing that you can think about, uh, obviously, is what you call it. Look into plastic hard for the future, mate. Yeah, you can get one mil plastic hard. I use that regularly. It's really quite sturdy. And once you've got a bit of filler on it and it's braced a little bit by what's going on top of it, you're fine. Yeah. Hope that helps you, buddy. Right. Moving on. Okay. Grey Knight Gaming. Hi, Mel. I'm just about to open a pot of acrylic mud made by Ammo by MIG. Never used it before. Any recommendations on how to apply it to a uh, Sarissa Precision plant set on the front of the residential buildings? You want a spatula, mate, for that stuff. Yeah. You can apply it with a... Uh, a brush but you end up getting streaks in it yeah and it knackers your brushes 
So, any sort of artistic plastic spatulas, you can get a small set from the craft store. Yeah, the other suggestion is, you know, the old school glue scrapers. Yeah, we all remember those. Yeah, and then on top of that, if you haven't got any particular spatulas around or anything like that, yeah, what you can do is you can just get a bit of card or a bit of plastic card and use that. The reason why I say spatulas over using brushes and stuff like that is it's nice and firm, it's an even spread, and you get good control with it, okay? So Grey Knight Gaming, I hope that helps you, buddy. Right, red greens are, uh, what do you think of the 3D printers and what stuff uh, do you print? That's a nice question to wrap it up with, actually. Right, 3D printers, what do I think of them? I quite like them, yeah. I, uh, I answered this question on, what do you call it, on the stream with AOS Coach last night. And to sum it up quite quickly and just to round off how I feel about 3D printing, First thing to realize is that terrain is a product, an end product, and it's a hobby as well. Yeah, i.e. there are some people who just want to get terrain on the tabletop so they can play their games. Yeah, and so for them buying kits, 3D printing, it's all great. Yeah, there are other people like a lot of us guys. Yeah, where Gold it's nutty. Well, not just that, it's the process of building the train, scratch building the train, that is the actual hobby. Whereas the people who want to get on the tabletop, the gaming side, what they do with it is the hobby bit for them. Whereas for us, we get the enjoyment from the building and the gaming, yeah? And there's lots of terrain makers who never play a game with this stuff or just give it away and they just enjoy the building. So I don't think 3D printing is ever going to completely replace the hobby, no. train building hobby, because it's a hobby in itself. Just like 3D printing is a hobby in itself. There's whole Facebook groups, yeah, where, what do you call it, where people just 3D print things and share photos of them. Most of them tend to be ladylike, from what I've seen. Ladylike or phallic. <laughs> yeah, but give a man a printer. <sighs> yeah when what you call it the one thing i like so for me i see 3d printing as a tool and for me it's not so much printing structures i see 3d printing as a great way of printing gribbly bits gribbly bits yeah like barrels and crates yeah. and pipe works and control panels all the stuff that's really fiddly to scratch build but you need a lot of it if you want to throw it on on a set and make it more detailed yeah, uh, Jez is saying, go watch the AOS, uh, AOS Coach video from last night. After this, it's very good. It was a really good stream. AOS did a really good job because what he did is he, he got about 20 questions, structured them in a logical way, then sent them to me in advance. So I got a chance to mull them over. Yeah, and so it's a really good uh, stream on leveling up your terrain. Yeah. And so, you know, 3D printing came up with that one. But for me, 3D printing is very much, that's how I make the gribblies. Yeah. Uh, and so that's it. Right. Well, that was the inaugural episode of TTT's Terrain Tips. <laughs> Five T's. Yeah. Uh, let me know what you think. If it goes well, let me know if you're interested in this. Uh, hit the like button if you like it. Give me feedback in the comments, yeah. It is quite a bit of editing, but if, it, if there's a lot of interest, then I'll start putting a bit more time into it. Perhaps include photos, link to the tutorials I mentioned and that sort of stuff. I'm giving it a go before I invest too heavily in it. So let me know if you like it. The links are down below. Obviously, if you like the show, then uh, you can subscribe to the channel, support us on Patreon, yeah, and if you're after more great vids, there's links on the screen, and it's late, and I'm not really sure what I'm saying now, but I've hoped you like this, and le genuinely, let me know in the comments down below what you think of it. Is it worth me doing this? Anyway, in the meantime, all the best, yeah? Ta-ra. <laughs>